Good evening all. Welcome to this new session. We will try to see some objective structured clinical examination that is OSC pattern questions in GIT. So this is the first case that is 35 year old male patient came with complaints of pain in left lumbar region since 3 days, squeezing type and radiating to back and burning maturation since 3 days. You can pause the slide and see the findings. So this is the slide. You can pause the slide and see the, all the questions in the OSC. So we will move on to the findings. Here you can see there is a uh, lesion here you can see this is the soft tissue lesion noted noted predominantly growing in the exophytic fashion abutting a part of the small bowel loop and also you can see there is necrosis in the medial aspect of the lesion and also you can see the free air noted with the non-dependent free air noted within the necrotic area within the soft tissue lesion and also there is adjacent mesenteric fat stranding so this is a classical case of gist so what is the sign which is called this is called as torricelli bernoulli sign which denotes non-dependent air trapped in the necrotic ulcer in the gist seen typically on axial ct or mri what are the important precursor cells which give rise to gist? They are believed to arise from intestinal interstitial cells of Kajal. What are the complications of gist which are GIT bleeding, intestinal obstruction, intraperitoneal hemorrhage, rupture and peritonitis. Two syndromes which are commonly associated with gist are carney strachetti syndrome, neurofibromatous 1 and familial gist syndrome. What is the response criteria used to assess the treatment? It is CHOI response criteria. What is the class uh, most sensitive and specific tumor marker in the GIST is nothing but DOG1 that is discovered on GIST1 or anectomine. And what are the uh, important treatment which can be used for GIST are tyrosine kinase inhibitors that like imetinab, sunitinab, malatic and these are other drugs which can be used and sometimes surgical treatment can be also used in GIST. So these are the different uh, OSC patterns commonly and co commonly asked in GIST. Next coming to the second question, you can see this is the second OSE. Here you can see there is a uh, heterogeneously enhancing mass lesion noted in the right lobe of the liver with significant capsular retraction. So this is the classical imaging findings in this case. So this is the significant uh, capsular retraction. Here you can see this is the capsular retraction in the right lobe of the liver. So this is the uh, typical characteristic imaging finding in this case. So pause the slide and see the questions. Here you can see this is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Nothing but this is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma with capsular retraction. What is the classical imaging finding in this? It is hepatic capsular retraction. So what are the other cause of hepatic capsular retraction? It can be cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, cholangiocarcinoma, metastasis, hemangioma, hepatic inflammatory pseudotumor, etc. Sometimes even tumor, trauma and also pseudomyxoma peritonei or pseudolipoma of glissens capsule. These are nothing but they mimic the hepatic capsular retraction. So, the, what can metastasis cause capsular retraction? Yes, metastasis can also cause capsular retraction with relatively fibrous primary tumors such as lung, breast, colonic cancers and carcinoids. Which tumor can cause massive cap capsular retraction? It is breast carcinomas which can cause massive capsular retraction. So, remember intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma with capsular retraction is the classical imaging finding. Next here you can see, you can pause the site and see what is the mark structure, name two indications, name one absolute contraindication where should it should not be used, mention serious complications associated with this treatment. This is nothing but a colonic chew stunt, this is a colonic chew stunt. The chew stunt is a stainless steel, uh, stainless steel uh, cylindrical zigzag stunt. Uh, it is available as a covered or non-covered stunts. Two indications are colonic decompression in carcinoma before surgical treatment. That is the main indication for colonic chew stunts. Dilatation of the colonic structures and colonic diverticulitis or, or other indications. One absolute contraindication where colonic stunt should not be used is bubble perforation. Name three serious complications associated with this treatment are stunt migration, stunt rupture, failure, obstruction and perforation. Here you can see this is the photograph of the colonic chew stunt which is nothing but stainless steel cylindrical zigzag stunt. This is other nothing but precision wa wall stunt. And also this is the fluoroscopic guidance. The stunt is placed at the level of carcinoma or the uh, narrowed carcinomatous area in the colon. So this is the journal from which I have taken the images. Next. Uh, Next, what is this one? This is the other case, OSC4. You can see what are the abnormal imaging findings, what is the cause, what is the specific history we had to ask in this case, and what are the other differential diagnosis for this imaging appearance. Here you can see this is the hyperdense liver. So you can clearly see this is the hyperdense liver when compared with the spleen, and also this is non contrast CT. And also you can also see hyperdensities in the lung with atelectasis, even pleural effusions, and even cardiomegaly. So this is nothing but classically seen in amiodarone toxicity. Amiodarone accumulation increases tissue attenuation due to iodine contained because amiodarone is composed of 37% iodine by weight and is structurally like thyroxine 
and is widely distributed in adipose tissues, liver, spleen and lung. So what is the history we have to ask? History of arrhythmias and treatment by amiodarone. Because amiodarone is a class 3 anti-arrhythmic. Toxicity, what is the toxicity we have to remember? Nothing but it's a cumulative dose which occurs at least 2 months on 400 mg per day or 2 years on 200 mg per day beyond which the amiodarone toxicity can occur. What are the other causes of hypertensive liver? Hemochromatosis, hemocytrosis, Wilson's disease, glycogen storage disorders, gold therapy and thorostat exposure are other causes which can cause hypertensive liver. Next this is the other OSC5 you can see uh, clearly you can see this is the stomach which is completely located in the thorax and the greater it is abnormal oriented stomach where the well, this is nothing but abnormal oriented stomach and also there is a hiatus hernia. So these are the questions you can pause the slide and see. So what is the diagnosis It is nothing but organoaxial gastric valvulus with hiatus hernia and what is Borger's triad it is nothing but severe sudden epigastric pain intractable reaching without vomiting and unable to pass a nasogastric tube. And what is cascade stomach? Cascade stomach is a congenital variant which mimics gastric valvulus. In gastric valvulus, there will be twisting or twisting of the mesentery or vascular compromise. But in cascade stomach, the greater curvature is superiorly placed and the lesser curvature is inferiorly placed. So the contrast fills the lesser curvature first, followed by greater curvature, and it mimics the gastric valvulus. But cascade stomach is a congenital variant. It's not not uh, it's uh, there is no need for operation. Whereas gastric valvulus has to be surgically repaired. Uh, the surgical repair can be stomach detox and gastropexy in strangulated or necrotic stomach it will be gastric resection so this is the other case what is the diagnosis uh, what are the differential diagnosis what is the criteria which is used so this is nothing but sclerosing mesenteritis clearly you can see there is a uh, well-defined mass like lesion nothing but which is causing mass effect on the adjacent structure it is the nothing but constituted by mesenteric fat of inhomogeneous higher attenuation than the adjacent uh, retroperitoneal or colonic fat and also there are multiple soft tissue nodules and also there is nothing but the fat halo sign can be seen and this in turn this mass is nothing but encapsulated by hyper attenuating pseudo capsule so fat halo sign and hyper attenuating pseudo capsule are very specific for sclerosing mesenteritis fdg pet is helpful in differentiating sclerosing mesenteritis from malignant mesenteric involvement sclerosing mesenteritis is not fdg avid whereas malignant mesenteric involvement is fdg avid Next, this is the other uh, last case. You can see there is a hypotense lesion with peripheral lamellated appearance, a target per type of enhancement, and which is showing central calcification. So, whenever you see a hypotense lesion with peripheral lamellated appearance and even central calcification, definitely suspect brucellar abscess. This is the other case where you can see this is the hypotense lesion with central nothing but rim enhancement that is the inner rim fall, uh, which is surrounded by a hyper hypertinating ring which is nothing but double target sign and there are multiple similar hypotense lesions which are clustered around the main lesion this is nothing but cluster sign so double target sign and cluster sign typically favor pyogenic abscess so these are the two cases and also you can see uh, this is the uh, journal that is solitary abscess involving the liver more frequently than spleen showing central calcification is the first pattern in brucellosis. Here also you can see liver abscess with cal central calcification is in 77% of cases of brucellosis. So these are the cases in GIT. Thank you all.